Hey, what is happening? What is going on? My name is G Sling and I'm doing my thing and I hope you are too and I hope everything's going really insane and amazing and everything's just off the charts. But today, what are we going to be doing? We're going to be talking about some receiver rankings and uh, well, I mean, these are more or just less. Uh, we're going to be talking about the receiver class. These are soft rankings, right? Once we get into the combine and uh, do some more uh, you know, assessment and all that good jazz, we'll really get in and dive into those draft rankings. But uh, this is kind of a soft ranking, so you have to let me know. There's still plenty of guys I need to watch more of, like Tim Jones, uh, Daz Newsome. So those will be all, you know, there's several guys I want to watch. Uh, Trey Walker. So we'll get into more of those guys, and obviously uh, we'll go from there. But these are my soft rankings here, so let's dive right into We're going to go through the first round studs, the second round dudes, and third round hollows. So we'll get right into it. And the first round studs, Jalen Waddell currently is my number one receiver. I think he is just so electric, so insane. And as you can see, it's speed, speed, speed. It kills. And with Jalen Waddell, he's more than just speed. He has the acceleration. He has the side-to-side -side movement. He can do it all, too. At the catch point, he's very good. And this is what separates those guys, you know, who are just speed guys. Henry Ruggs from someone. And I don't hate Henry Ruggs. So this is, you know, just a recent comparison. But uh, nonetheless, Jalen Waddle, what he can do on the, uh, you know, with his speed is just different, right? And uh, he can. Now, my big question mark for him is can he play on the outside? I think he can. I really do. I think he can. He's got to work on his release. You know, he doesn't see sometimes a whole ton of that. Alabama, they scheme him and different things that they can do and get him free releases. But uh, at the same time, I think he's got the ability to get better at that department. I do think he's going to be a one to two year development project in terms of that aspect. But man, I like Jalen Waddell. He is my number one receiver. What he can do is just different. And that's why I just can't. I can't put him anywhere else. But uh, and it is tough. It is really, really tough. My number two receiver here, uh, Jamar Chase. I really, obviously, Jamar Chase is probably the most complete receiver in this draft class. His, uh, you know, what he can do at, uh, whether it's the catch point, whether it's getting separation. Now, he's not the best separator in this class by any means. He's not the best separator, but he does just enough at, like, at the right time. You know how the good receivers in the NFL, like, they find that bit of separation whether it's like using their body or, you, you know what I'm saying, like using their leverage, that's Jamar Chase. That is what he's good at, and that is what separates him. And uh, he's, he's up hype right, right there. But uh, anyway, uh, that's what I feel with Jamar Chase is so special about him. It's just that ability to find that bit of separation right when you need it, and that's what you find in good receivers. Now, my, my kind of... You know, one harp on him is the opt-out. I get it. He's, like, really, really good. He didn't need to play. But at the same time, it's, like, competitive nature. I, you know, I also understand the COVID situation, so I don't want to get too much into that. It's, you know, it, it is what it is. But at the same time, uh, you know, there's a little bit there. It seemed like it wasn't for that. It was more just, hey, you know, I'm too good. I don't need to play. So, a anyway, Jamar Chase, still number two here. But I think he could be number one had he come back and really proven that. So, Next receiver, it's the Heisman Trophy winner, Devontae Smith. And Devontae Smith is, I mean, without question, a very talented receiver. And he probably would be the number one receiver in next year's class. But with Devontae Smith, it's unbelievable route running ability. You can see it. His separation is maybe the best in this class. Maybe he's the most uh, gifted route runner, I would say. Now, maybe the next guy, too, I think is very, very good. But uh you know, we'll get into that in a second. But going on to his size, I know people are going to harp about this. I'm not really that concerned about his size personally. I mean, I don't care if he's playing at 165. That uh, Maybe at 165, that'd be a little insane. But uh, he, he's probably playing at like 175 or somewhere around there. And uh, nonetheless, I, I'm not too worried about that. I really am not. If you can get open, if you can make catches, it really doesn't matter. Uh, but at the same time, I do think that that could be a problem. When you're getting hit by these guys that are 200 plus pounds on you, it's going to be a little bit more tricky. And if you're getting hit, you know, off the line of scrimmage by those guys, it is a something that you, I want to see him do, you know, or at least be able to have that ability. So we'll have to wait and see. But I think Devontae Smith is just so solid. Going on here to number four, it's Rashad Bateman. And I love Rashad Bateman. Maybe one of my favorite players in the class. Just, uh, you know, overall, 
his his mentality up to the game and the person that he is too. So I mean, you try to look at intangibles with these guys, whether it's watching interviews and things like that. I try to do all that um, with these dudes if you can find the interviews available. But I like Rashad Bateman. Just the, you know, he's not like super gifted athletically or nothing like that. But to me, it's like if this dude is a bust, then I mean, I just I can't see it. I just cannot see him being a bust. You watch three years down the line, he's a bust. But nonetheless, I hope not. Hopefully, I'm not jinxing Rashad Bateman because I really do like him and what he can do. Whether it's his route running ability is just so solid, man. He's so technically refined in that department. His release is probably the best in this class. I I think his releases are NFL ready day one. He can get off the line of scrimmage first press, be an outside receiver, and I would love to see him for a team, any team that needs an excellent receiver, uh, an excellent ex. Uh, receiver Rashad Bateman knocking on the door I would take him I mean I wouldn't even hate you if you're taking him over some of these other guys I don't know I'm just saying uh, you know I like Rashad Bateman so let's keep on going here and Rondell Moore is my last first round stud and uh, this is one of those where Rondell Moore is just different I mean he's one of those just like Jalen Waddle he's different right his athletic he's not as fast as Jalen Waddle nowhere near as fast well I mean he's pretty fast but he's not in that t- category, but what does make him so insane is how electric he is with the ball, first off, in his hands. And I do think he will be a good route runner. Now, his route tree was very limited at Purdue. A lot of bubble screens and get him on quick slants and things like that. So you didn't see, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, you know the NFL route tree in terms of asking him to, you know, deep pose and uh, different, you know, nine, you know, different different routes, okay? Different route combinations, uh, all across the board. So you didn't see a whole ton of that. But what I will say with Rondell Moore is just he, his projection is just. I, someone pointed out this the other day and said he's Steve Smith comp. And, and I'm not huge into comps and everything like that. But I'm telling you, if there's anybody that I think could be a uh, just an absolute stud, a Steve Smith sort of dude, I think it's Rondell Moore in this class. Just got to stay healthy, man. I hope he can stay healthy. And, uh, you know, another dude local here. I'm in Indy. So. Um, I'm rooting for him quite a bit, so I really think he can be an absolute boss and beast at the next level. So let's get into our second round players now. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the second round dudes, and it starts with Elijah Moore. So Elijah Moore, to me, and the reason why he's uh, here over some other people, like, you know, Kadarius Tony, who we'll talk about here in a second. Hold on, hold the phone just a second. I know Kadarius Tony. Uh, but here's my thing, and I, I'm a little hard on some of these guys, maybe, and uh, you'll you know you'll see that. But you know, I like I like all these guys and what they can do. But Elijah Moore, to me, is just so technically sound day one that I think he's a better prospect right now than Kadarius Tony. So you know, you can take that for you what you want. I think that Kadarius Tony has way more upside per se, but upside is just that, right? You see in the NFL, like, they talk about, oh, you got all these upside, but at the end of the day, like, can you play football? Do you have the skills to play football? That's Elijah Moore to me. He has the skills to play football and to do it at a very high level. Now, I don't think he's going to be an insane receiver. He's not Antonio Brown or anything like that. I'm not comparing him there, but I think he's going to come in and be a very, very good slot receiver, and if he can stay healthy, I really think, um, you know, not complacent uh, player comparison-wise, like, Someone like Sterling Shepard would be kind of his floor, in my opinion. Like, he's just going to have that level of production, but maybe can stay healthy, right? That's uh, a big thing there. But uh, nonetheless, and I mean, he hasn't showed I'm talking about Sterling Shepard, of course. But uh, nonetheless, with Elijah Moore, I really, really think he's going to be a great slot receiver. Now, the things knocking him from being like an elite tier receiver is his speed, of course. I mean, I don't think he's got insane speed, but he's got, he makes dudes miss with the ball in his hands if you get the ball in his hands and uh, he will make that first defender miss more than likely and uh, you know things to worry about like I said his size getting off press I definitely think that that's going to be something he can get pushed around for sure you know with his size I've saw I saw him get pushed around several times uh, throughout his tape but uh, at the same time I think he has the profile to get better and if nothing else be a very very good slot player at the next level so let's go on speaking of Kadarius Tony who I am still a very big fan of I just want to kind of cool down the waters with Kadarius getting this you know like top 15 hype I think that that's a little bit too high on Tony now with Tony I will say that there is going to be a time in the NFL where Tony just goes off and people are like oh 
my, this is where we saw with Kadarius Tony at college. He is going to have like that year or two where he is just maybe one of the elite receivers in the NFL. So with that regard, I do think Tony will be insane. And if he goes to the right team and has the right development, I think he can be a very, very good receiver year in and year out. But at the same time, I do worry with certain things with um, just his, I mean, we talk about sample size. It is something. However, I, I give that a little bit of the benefit of the doubt because look, I mean, his quarterback play was not great until Kyle Trask came on. I mean, you had, what, Filippo Franks throwing in the ball, and it just wasn't a great situation there. You also had a lot of receivers ahead of him on the depth chart, you know, that, that recently got drafted in the NFL. So that was another thing. I mean, you've got a lot of situations on that team, but, you know, you can make excuses and all that. Uh, going on to this year's tape with Kadarius Tony, I just felt like, uh, you know, his point, at his, his uh, ability at the catch point is something I want to see him improve on for sure. But obviously, let's get back to the pros, and that's his movement skills. It's just, it's different, right? He, his movement skills are insane, and they're off the charts, and that's why, you know, you take Kadarius Tony. But personally, I would take him second, top of the second round. That's where I see Kadarius Tony and the value there. Or back end of the first. I'm okay with the back end of the first, too. If you're like the Kansas City Chiefs, if you are going to know what you're doing schematically to get him involved. Anyway, let's go on to Diomi Brown here, who is somebody as well. I'm a big, big fan of Diomi Brown. I think he is an insane player. Maybe even underrated. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. Underrated. Not people. I feel like not a lot of people talking about Diomi Brown, but... Go watch the tape on Diomi Brown. Dude just finds ways to get open. He's a vertical threat, a big-time vertical threat at NC, uh, NC State. or I mean, North Carolina, NC State. I don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, anyway, he's a big, big-time threat there at North Carolina and Sam Howell. And uh, it's, uh, it's one of those things where I think he does need to work on his route tree a little bit. But, you know, I, you know they didn't ask him to do a whole ton of different routes. So I, I'm not going to put that too much of a knock on him. I think that that's going to be something that he could kind of work in I think he has the ability too. he's got you know he's not like an, a plus athlete or nothing but he's solid in that regard I think he's he's relatively smooth and you know I, I don't see that being a problem for him so uh, got good build too so Diomi Brown keep an eye on him I'm a big big fan Anyway, let's get moving on here to Dwayne Eskridge. And Dwayne Eskridge, I'm not talking about Eskridge Farms or, uh, I don't know, hot dogs or anything like that. No hot dogs today. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, the grill's probably not. Uh, I don't think you could probably grill right now. It's still a little bit snowing. But uh, anyway, Dwayne Eskridge, the, the receiver from Western Michigan. I'm a big, big fan of his. I think he can be an absolute monster. And I get it. He's a little bit older now. He's going to be, what, like 24 by the time... Uh, we come to draft day. So with Dwayne Eskridge, what I like so much about him is his ability to, I mean, obviously separate, right? He's a great separator, and it's partially because of his speed. It's just so insane. And you saw it at the Senior Bowl. I mean, his ability to separate and get away from players was just different. The movement skills are solid, you know, and when you have that ability to just accelerate so fast and get away, that translates to the NFL. It translates. I think he will be an absolute monster. Despite, you know, him being 24, I'm not that worried about it. You know what? Hey, if you can get five good years out of Dwayne Eskridge on your contract and, you know, whatever, then that's great. You know what I'm saying? But I, I'm not too worried about it. Players can play until they're older. And, you know, that's not something. If they work hard, if they're good, if they've got a good work ethic, Again, it doesn't matter to me. The same thing with Calvin Ridley, right? He was, what, 23 coming into the NFL. Like, I, I'm not too worried about that. If you've got a good work ethic, you can stay in the NFL longer. And, I mean, you've seen a lot of good players, whether it's Antonio Brown coming to the league when he's older. Um, I mean, we could go down the list of guys who have come into the league. Tom Brady came. I mean, these are different situations, but you know what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Anyway, Eskridge Farms over here, really a big fan of Dwayne Eskridge. Going on to my last second round receiver, and like I said, I'm high, I'm high, you know, I'm gonna be a little hard on these players because this is what you gotta do. But nonetheless, Terrence Marshall, a uh, dude from LSU, the third man out of this, you know, this LSU offense that they've had going, and he's another one of those dudes that has man, he's got a lot of upside. But will he get there? I think that you know, you watch the tape on him. One too many drops. There's uh, some areas I think he needs to refine in his his uh, ability to separate. And also, I think that 
overall, uh, you know, I still want to see him grow a little bit into his body. You know, he, what is he, like 6'3", 200 pounds. And you know how they, he's probably playing at like 195 or whatever. So a little skinny. I think that he needs to kind of, you know, maybe muscle up. But to me, my comparison for him is DJ Chark. I think he's going to take a year in the NFL to kind of, get going. I think that that's why he's a late second round pick to me. I just don't think day one he is ready to come in and be uh, an elite receiver or nothing like that. So that's what kind of separates him from Dwayne Eskridge and some of these other guys. I think that they can kind of come in day one and be really good receivers. And, and I don't think, you know, I like this is no knock on Terrace Marshall or nothing like that. I think he can get there one day and maybe he'll be better. But at the same time, I do think that Currently, right now, this is where I feel comfortable ranking him in the process. So let's get on to our third round dudes. So at the third round, and uh, Amari Rogers, man, I am a big fan of his and what he can do. Man, I'm telling you, I think you could line him up at running back, and I really think he could do it. Like, I'm, I think he has the body type. I think he has that ability. I really would love to see him try being a running back, too. I think he could do it. But in terms of his ability at receiver, hey, I like that, too, a lot. But uh, man, that would be so interesting to see him as like a, a dual threat running back mismatch, uh, you know, sort of player. But uh, nonetheless, Amari Rogers, I think he's going to be a very, very good slot receiver at the next level. And, you know, you saw his speed as well at the, at the senior bowl. I mean, he's got a, he's got a different gear. So, uh, you know, that definitely translates 100 percent. But going on to him more uh, about what he can do, it, it, you know, he can give you and, and the reason why I have him a little bit lower in terms of the third round, this is not a knock on him as a player or anything like that. I just think that he does need to improve in certain areas, right? His catching needs to get better. His, uh, you know, like what I mean by that too with his catching is I feel like when he gets hit and stuff like that, and this is another reason why I think he's more of a slot dude and not an outside weapon, I think he could get there at some point. And, and in certain systems, okay, in certain systems, I think he could play more on the outside uh, you know, like Tennessee, I, I bring up to Tennessee, I think he'd be a really good fit in Tennessee. But um, uh, going on to, I think when he gets hit and things like that, when he's under it, you know, if he's going to be hit, uh, you know, a lot of contacted line of scrimmage, if he's going to be getting hit while getting a catch, contested catch, right? I think that that's somewhere we want to see an improvement with him. I just saw some areas where he just made too many drops or didn't have quite the arm length or the ability to reel in those plays. So again, I, I really do like Amari Rogers. I mean, you've seen the season, you know, the ability to separate on tape uh, at Clemson, Senior Bowl, multiple areas. He's got that ability, and he was a safety blanket for Trevor Lawrence. And whether it was bubble screens, he ran a lot of bubble screens and things like that to there at Clemson. But, um, you know, definitely really do like Amari Rodgers and the ability that he can make, make people miss. And, uh, yeah, I like Amari Rodgers a lot. Anyway, let's get into our next player. Dun, 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 dun. Tutu Atwell. And Tutu Atwell is another one of those dudes that I know, I've, you know, we've been seeing him mocked in the first round and whatnot. I think that's a little too high. Okay, I, I like Tutu Atwell a lot. Like, I think that he can be somebody who's a chess piece sort of weapon right in the right system. But at the same time, if you are going to be putting this guy out here and, uh, you know, just say, hey, go be Tyreek Hill. He's not that dude. I think you need to have a clear plan in place with him. Uh, you know, again, his speed is insane. He's probably, I've heard he's going to run like 4-2, 4-3 range, and I, I believe it. But when you're, you know, 165 pounds and, you know, it's like, okay. You know, we got to wait and see because I'm telling you at the NFL, it's just different when you're getting hit and bodied by these 200 plus pound guys, whether it's at corner or, you know, linebackers and getting hit across the middle of the field. But uh, what Tutu Atwell can do is just, you know, if you have a certain scheme in place, whether it's uh, misdirection, whether it's just doing a lot of jet screens and jet motions and stuff like that, that sort of offense. So like, for example, he might thrive in a system like Kansas City, of course, but I mean, any receiver I think can thrive in Kansas City's uh, system and whatnot. I mean, I know that one's a big comparison, but Green Bay would be another interesting uh, area for him to go to. But, um, you know, there's, there's different roles for Tutu Atwell, but if you're going to ask him to be just a vertical threat, I think you're going to be off on that, okay? I don't see him as just this vertical guy who's going to win uh, just strictly off of speed because, again, at the NFL, it just doesn't work that way. So 
I, uh, I think he needs to work on his route running too, uh, get better as more of a nuanced route runner. I think he, he, he has the skills to get there, but just watching him on tape, I think that he needs to work a little bit more in that area and getting better. I mean, I guess everybody needs to work in that area, but I just didn't see quite the, you know, that next transition level that gets you from that, you know, that one level to the second tier level. And that's kind of the area I'm concerned about with him. And also, you know, some of those just quick routes and things like that, um, you know, more intricate routes, whether it's, uh, you know, a 10 yard in or whatever, things like that. So that's some things I want him to work on as well. But, you know, does he have the body frame too for that, which is another kind of argue point to that but anyway we're getting a little bit too technical with it i do like tutu atwell and we'll move on here so moving on to jalen darden here another one of those dudes man athleticism is just screaming off the charts he's human joystick it's straight up i mean you can just i mean you can go turn on the tape real quick and you will see J- i mean you only have to know who jalen darden is you'll just know who it is by uh you know watching a game of his and you'll be like okay that's jalen darden by the way he moves He's got that sort of ability. Now, yeah, it's it's sort of it comes down to it again. Does he have the size to play outside? I don't know. Probably going to be a slot weapon, especially early on. His route tree is limited there at North Texas. So those are both situations you kind of have to look at. But to me, if he's here on the third round, I, you take a shot at him 100% and see what he can do. Next receiver, Nico Collins, another one of those man dudes that uh, you know is physical at the catch point, guys. And it's tough to project because when you don't really have that separation ability, and I'm not saying he can't separate, but it is something to note. He was definitely outbodying people. And, you know, I love it. I love what he's able to do because he literally, and this is the reason why he's on this list is because he can literally catch everything. Like, I didn't see him like drop one at the senior bowl. And on his tape, like he doesn't drop many. He's just so good at catching the ball. And that sort of thing, like to me, I mean, it translates, okay? When you don't catch, or when you can catch everything like that, and the way he was catching things, it just, it, it is a bit different. But at the same time, I do want to see him work on that separation ability. And also the opt-out does scare me a little bit with him. I wanted to see another year of production with him. I, I get it, the Michigan offense, you know, I don't know if it would have helped him much. But anyway, let's keep on rolling here. It's Austin Watkins, the UAB receiver. I am a big fan of his as well. I think he is super underrated and a guy to keep an eye out on. He might be on the underrated watch list. We'll have to wait and see for that. But uh, going on to Austin and what his ability is, you know, if there's anybody that's Michael Gallup here in this, this draft class, it could be Austin Watkins. He's just so, so sound. He's really sound for, I feel like, where he was at UAB and everything. Like, what he was able to do uh, really impressed me, man. It just his catching ability is second to none. I, d- I don't see many drops on his footage. Just catches everything, uh, you know. And he's got good enough separation, too. Like, he's not an elite separator, but his route running is decent. Like, it's not bad. It, it can be worked on, but... Uh, Man, I'm really a fan of Austin Watkins. I'm going to have to watch more and more tape of him. I hope YouTube puts more and more verses up on him, but he is really, really fun to watch. Interesting uh, to see how he progresses along here. Anyway, Tylen Wallace is next, and these next couple guys are dudes that I feel like um, I'm personally maybe not as high on Tylen Wallace just because I think at the next level he's going to really struggle off the line of scrimmage. You know, I've got getting jammed uh, quite a bit. He he can definitely get, you know, hit off the line or even push back while he's in his route. And it's just something to me where he needs to work on maybe getting a little bit more physical. I think he has the body type to do it. I just want to see that more uh, physicality in his game. Uh, but I do think he's very, very well-rounded in his overall ability, whether it's route running, at the catch point, things like that. So he does have the talent. I also... You know, it's the, you know, Pac-12, there's a little bit of worry. You know, you've seen James Washington thrive uh, in that similar role. But nonetheless, I'm not going to compare teammates and things like that. I don't want to, you know, throw anything like that. But I like Tylen Wallace. Let's go on to the wing dragon of St. Ra, and it's Amon Ra St. Brown. And, you know, maybe it's more of a fan of his name than anything else. But uh, he's another one of those dudes that just saw him get bullied one too many times. And that's something I think he needs to improve on. However, this dude has great ability at vertical and, you know, those deep posts. I saw him win so many of those, just so many. And, uh, you know, that definitely 
to me, kind of like a Robbie Anderson type of player at the next level. And believe you me, there's plenty of teams that would like a Robbie Anderson type of dude. Now, I don't necessarily think he's as fast as Robbie Anderson, but I do think he's got a certain game that can uh, translate in, in particular roles. So and as a, th- a late third round pick, I think he can be a good player for your team if you're understanding that, you know, I don't think he's going to be this elite separator. I don't think he's going to be this elite uh, speed guy, but at the same time, I do think he has a place on the vertical uh, side of the ball and also uh, in certain situations across the field. So I really do like Amon Ross St. Brown. I just don't think he's going to be elite. And that's why I'm pushing back from, you know, that first round, early second round projection that you're kind of seeing him. Uh, now, I don't know if it's it's going around a lot, but early on in his rankings, you take a look across the board, his rankings, I feel like a little bit higher. I'd like to get him more in the third and, you know, kind of roll back where, where you see him in terms of his overall ability. I mean, I think his route running is good. Like, it's not bad or nothing, but... I wouldn't say he's like an elite route runner or nothing. Anyway, that is my view on this draft and uh, the receiving core. Like I said, I got a lot more guys to go over here and uh, we'll get right into those. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed and everything. My name's G Sling. I'm doing my thing and I hope you have a good one.